Today on Monkey Life. Morning, Jim. Alison goes to the rescue of four more marmosets. But there's a surprise in store. I think we definitely have two different species here. It's all change at the Orang Nursery to make room for a baby who's on his way from Hungary. It's very, very important that he can meet other young orangs and possibly foster mothers. And a specially built enclosure to keep baby Wooly Bueno Jr. safe. Monkey World in Dorset, nestled deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescues and rehabilitates abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. We've really done everything we can to make her journey as smooth as possible. The park provides a home for more than 240 monkeys and apes, allowing them to live out their lives in safety and peace. The recent influx of marmosets to the park is continuing to be a problem. Building work has started on a new marmoset complex, but it'll be a while before it's ready to take any residents. Today, Alison is heading north to Cheshire to pick up four more little monkeys, once again victims of the British pet trade. She's been contacted by a pub landlord who's moving out and can't take them with him but she's confused about the information she's been given. The photographs that came through, it's very clear to me that he doesn't have a group of common marmosets. He has a female common marmoset and what appears to be two completely different species. And it would seem that the males have mated, one of the males has mated with the female and they've produced a hybrid offspring that looks like a common marmoset. This is becoming an increasing problem. Unscrupulous dealers are selling primates as one species, when in fact, they're something entirely different. And the landlord of this pub is just one of many people who have been duped. He bought the monkeys to attract families into the pub, but now he wants them to live in a more natural environment. Good morning, Jim. Jim McPhee is one of the better owners. He's tried to give the marmosets a decent home by building a large outdoor enclosure and feeding them the correct diet. But like so many owners, he doesn't have the knowledge to look after them properly and he's had to spend a lot of money. And for the three marmosets, how much did he pay? I paid £3,900. Approximately everything probably costs something in the region of about 8000 to 10000 an hour. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. Inside, the monkeys are being kept in a birdcage. Hey, you. So you're one of the little men. Hi, you. Oh, your ears are laid back. Not common marmosets, I don't believe. So Alison's suspicions are confirmed. Jim thought he'd been sold three common marmosets by the pet shop, but he was wrong. I've seen three of the marmosets, the three adults. Um, and I think we definitely have two different species here. But, you know, once again, I'll reserve judgment until we get them back to the park and they come out of their nest box and we can see them moving around. But the two boys look distinctly different to me than a common marmoset. So my gut instinct says that we have two different species. Along with the three adult marmosets, there's also a baby, which belongs to the female. So it's baby rice or baby milk? There's different types. I've given them various... I think I've given them about three different types, banana flavoured. Jim gives Alison a detailed list of the food he's been giving the monkeys. It's clear he's made a big effort to try to care for them properly. These marmosets are lucky in having had a good owner. In most of the cases Alison sees, they're in a much worse state. All really good and he's done a really nice things and um, we'll take good care of his monkeys. So. See you later. I'll give you a shout as soon as we get back home. So it's all changed for these little marmosets. In just a few hours' time, they'll get the first glimpse of their new home.
back in Dorset, the Orangs are having another reshuffle. Xiao Kwai and her adopted daughter Awan are moving back to the nursery. There they'll rejoin Xiao Kwai's two sons, seven-year-old Kai and five-year-old Jin. They're swapping places with best friends Linga and Dinda, who are now old enough to join Tuan's group. The reason for the switch lies in the Hungarian capital, Budapest. The zoo there has asked Monkey World for help because they have a young male Sumatran orangutan in need of a new home. Bulu Mata, whose name translates as eyelashes, has had to be hand-reared for the last three months because his mum tragically died when he was only a few days old. Monkey World runs the European creche for orphaned orangutans and the primate care staff have years of experience in looking after youngsters, so it's the obvious place for Bulu to go. We had a contact with Monkey World and I was very, very pleased to get a very, very positive answer that they are really ready to receive this animal. It's very important in the future of this orangutan, uh, particularly in terms of uh, social life because the general care we can, we can give him. It's very, very important that he can meet other young orangs and possibly foster mothers. And our decision was that Monkey World and the technology and the daily routine what Monkey World is doing at the orangutan nursery should be a, probably the best option. The keepers at Budapest Zoo have been socializing Bulu with the other orangs, including his dad and sister, as much as possible so that he doesn't become too human-focused. We hope that it will help him uh, during the introduction process in Monkey World. He can smell, the others can a little bit touch him, he can feel an orang. So for the future perspective, I think it's going to be very, very hopeful. It's hoped that Xiao Kwai will act as surrogate mum to Bulu, which is why she's been brought back to the nursery. She's very maternal and over the years has proved to be a great mother figure. And she took on Awan when her mum rejected her. An added bonus is that she's still producing milk. But whether her milk is of a good enough quality or quantity, no one knows. And it is a gamble that she'll look after Bulu. The team are hoping her instincts will kick in once again when she sets eyes on him. There are several reasons why babies can end up on their own. Sometimes, like Bulu, they're orphaned, but sometimes they're rejected by their mums. Little woolly monkey Bueno Jr. has had to be hand-reared since he was born because his mum Sarah had a traumatic birth and didn't want to look after him. The team goes to extraordinary lengths to care for these vulnerable youngsters. Bueno Jr. has now joined Lavar's group full-time, but staff are having to build a brand new large pen to allow him to go outside because he's still so small and vulnerable. He doesn't have a mum to look after him, and when he finally decides that he wants to go outside, if we were to let him into the, the big open enclosure that the rest of the group use right now, he would be open to all sorts of threats from the sky, for example, like buzzards and things like that. So this actually has a roof on it now, it's a mesh roof. Um, so he can still see the sky, but nothing can get to him. So he's going to learn what trees are and what the grass is and all sorts of things out here before he's then big enough to go out into the big enclosure. The team is going to get the whole group to test the enclosure, so they've brought some tasty treats to tempt them outside. The Woolies watch on intrigued. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. They all seem eager to explore. Leader Levar immediately gets territorial and starts scent marking. While dominant female Piquita, who loves her food, heads straight for the fruit. As does Kuna, the other adult female in the group. Boys will be boys, and boisterous Bronco gives the new hoses and cargo net a test run. 
Lavar is happy to leave him to it. The younger Woolies haven't appeared yet. Paquita's daughter Isla cautiously ventures in. But her younger brother Manny is nervous. The older monkeys try to coax him in by calling to let him know where they are. But he's scared and stays put. Bronco, who's like the uncle of the group, takes matters into his own hands and offers Manny a ride. Bronco has actually nominated himself the protector of this group. He's just really nice, especially when it comes to the youngsters. He adores his females, and whenever they have babies, he's just right there beside them, making sure that the babies are OK. So it's actually quite nice to see Bronco do this. Manny looks a little bewildered, but at least he is outside. The reason this new enclosure was built was because of Bueno Jr. But he's still in the bedroom. Come on, Junior. Come on, hi. Come on, in. Quick. And no amount of encouragement from Sandra is persuading him to budge. Come on, Junior. Let's go. Come on. Bueno Jr. unfortunately hasn't made it out as yet. At the moment, he's quite happy having breakfast in a bedroom. We'll continue to try and encourage him down to this side of the house and hopefully he might step out. Um, but it's just a waiting game at the moment. Baby Woolies are carried around by their mums for up to two years. So it's not surprising Junior is so reticent. He's having to do everything on his own. And it's a steep learning curve. But he's gaining in confidence every day and hopefully he'll soon be able to enjoy his newly built outdoor space as much as his new family are. Coming up, Alison arrives back with the four marmosets from Cheshire. We can make a decision about what we think they all are, but... And the team finally find out why Cherry's two-week-old twin daughter passed away. Little Louise had a hole in her heart. Alison is just arriving back at the park with four new marmosets after a long journey from Cheshire. There are two males, one female, and a baby. But Alison is still unsure of their specific species. We can make a decision about what we think they all are. The family are going to be put in a bedroom together for the time being, until the primate care staff have had a chance to see how well they all get on together. They seem eager to explore their new surroundings, and the first signs are hopeful. Of course, this is the first time I've actually been able to see them move and run because they were all tucked up this morning, so they look pretty good. She's definitely in charge and quite stocky and robust. The boys look sort of scrawny, but that might be because just the fur's missing and they look that way. So. Um, We'll keep an eye on them, and the youngster's fine and very independent, because right now the three adults are sort of sticking in this side, and the youngster's over in the room next door. The three adult marmosets have already got names. The large female is called Little Red. She's a common marmoset. But the two males are a puzzle. One is called Brass, and the other is Evie. The dealer who sold him originally said he was a she. But the baby has yet to be named, and animal manager Jeremy has had an idea. Jeremy hit the nail on the, the head, Bassett, because he's all sorts. Um, so he's got all sorts mixed up in there. In the wild, marmosets live in small family groups, and that's how the team like them to live here at the park. Hopefully, these four will get along harmoniously, but if for any reason there are problems, they could separate Little Red off and put her in with another male. We'll have to wait and see what, how they develop and how their relationship goes and if they stick together. But really, please, they're, they're looking good. Another new arrival seems to be getting on like a house on fire with his new roommate. Cotton Top Tamarine Hawkeye was brought to Monkey World to pair up with the park's existing Cotton Top, Uncas. Uncas lost his partner Alice a while ago and had been teamed up with Saki Monkey Jethro, who was also on his own. But they fell out and had to be separated. 
So when Hawkeye appeared, it seemed like a match made in heaven for Uncas. And since they've been together, he's been much happier. This is definitely an old geriatric couple. Um, we don't know Uncas's age, but you just have to look at him and see that he's getting on a little bit now. He's in his latter stages of life. And Hawkeye himself is really elderly as well. He's about 18 years old, which is really quite old for a cotton top tamarind. So um, yeah, they're both, none of them are a spring chicken. So, you know, they don't, you don't see them flying around the enclosure, but if you see one, you'll definitely see the other. They don't spend an awful lot of time apart from each other. In the wild, cotton tops feed on, amongst other things, sap from trees which gives them many of the minerals and nutrients they need. In captivity, this is substituted by a natural gum made from hardened sap. The tamarinds absolutely love the gum. It's probably their favourite time of the day. Along with the insects, yeah, it's definitely a favourite. Come on! Uncus has a healthy appetite. He's using his long tongue to lick the gum out of the holes in the log. Hawkeye isn't far behind. In the wild, cotton tops gouge out holes in the bark of trees with their teeth to get to the sap. Cotton top tamarinds are one of the most endangered primates in South America. There are less than a thousand of them left in the wild. They get their name from the long white hair flowing around their black faces, like a mane of white cotton. The keepers haven't made it easy for Uncas and Hawkeye. They've suspended the logs around the enclosure to encourage the two cotton tops to get some exercise. Hanging them on ropes tests their agility, balance and strength. It's still really important to keep them active and to keep them busy. If we just made everything simple for them, then what's the point really? They're just going to sit there and get old. So anything that we can do to keep them busy, as long as they're obviously still able to do it, it's still important to try and keep them stimulated. Cotton tops are social animals, so it's great that Uncas now has another friend to grow old with. At Hernania's house, the chimps still seem rather dejected after the tragic death of one of Cherry's twins, her two-week-old daughter Louise. But the post-mortem has proved interesting. Little Louise had a hole in her heart. Um, and it was two to three millimeters in size. Now that doesn't actually sound very big, but if you look at the tip of, say, a pen, that's probably about two to three millimeters. And if you put high pressure fluid behind it, i.e. a heart pumping blood from one side to the other, that's a fair amount of fluid that's not going the correct direction, let's put it that way. As it happens, the post-mortem can at least relieve our concerns and worries that we missed something. There was no way we could have known that, that that Louise had a hole in her heart. Um, so good to know doesn't make me feel any better. And I'm still terribly sad for Cherry and terribly sad for the group and for Velma, who gets to grow up in the group, albeit a fun group. But it would have been nice if she had her, her sister with her to sort of grow up together and be able to play together. Morning, guys. To try to cheer the chimps up, the primate care staff have planted coconuts and chestnuts all over the enclosure. Chimps are very intelligent, but these can be hard nuts to crack. Hananya is so busy putting on a display for the others that he's missing out. High-ranking Johnny knows with so many chimps around, you have to grab what you can, when you can. A philosophy Simon also subscribes to, although he prefers chestnuts to coconuts. The boss is still too busy throwing his weight around to notice the treats are disappearing fast. Grabbing the coconuts is one thing, getting into them something else, and all the chimps have different techniques. Tootie is nothing if not determined. And eventually, perseverance pays off. For some. Johnny hasn't had any success so far and is now trying brute force. But still getting nowhere. Clever Tico, who is second in command, is using his brains. 
He's sharpening a stick and pushing it into the husk to get at the milk. Watched by an admiring honey. Peggy has her own individual style. Slowly, they do start to reap the rewards. Meanwhile, Cherry is looking after her remaining twin, Thelma. Even before Louise died, there was concern amongst the team as to whether Cherry would continue to care for her babies, but she's proving her doubters wrong. Right now, I'm feeling pretty optimistic and good. Actually, more optimistic and good than I was when she had the twins. Um, so I think, and I'm very hopeful, and I'm touching a lot of wood right now, that um, Cherry will be able to look after Thelma and that she'll be able to grow up in Hananya's group fit and strong. The events of recent weeks seem to have brought the chimps closer together. Babies are very important in chimp society and Cherry will have plenty of help bringing up her little girl. Thelma may have lost her sister, but she's gained a lot of doting aunts and uncles. Next time on Monkey Life, all eyes are on Xiao Kuai to see if she will become Baby Bulu's new mom. Things are gonna take a little bit of time and that's okay. And a friend at last for downtrodden, stumpy Phil. They are getting on really well and it's really nice to see.